This program is brought to you by Emory University. If you've ever been to Tallulah Falls, it's an incredible place. You start very high up on a bluff. This is by the parking lot. You walk down a windy trail that ends at the base of the Tallulah Falls. It's a great thing. There are a lot of repeating patterns in this hike, so little switchbacks. You can hear the falls, and then when you turn a corner, you no longer hear the falls, but then you turn another corner, you hear the falls again. This is very much like the fractals that we've discovered in the partition numbers. It's the problems of the partitions, it's, they're over 300 years old. Numbers that Euler and Gauss and Ramanujan and so many others studied with great enthusiasm. Now, one of the questions that I wanted to study, it's been honestly a lifelong passion, this one question is to study the divisibility properties of these numbers. There are practical applications of these properties, but I really wanted to just get to the bottom of what rules these numbers, what dictates the properties of the prime divisors of these numbers. So together with uh, Zach Kent, who is a postdoc here at Emory, and Amanda Folsom, one of my former postdoctoral advisees, we set out about, about eight or nine months ago to build a theory that would explain and answer these questions, explain these divisibility properties. And we realize that, you know, there is a mathematical framework, a coherent framework that we could develop that seemed to match all the data. The problem is, for a theoretical mathematician, you can observe some patterns, but how do you know these patterns go on forever? So we were, we were frankly very, we were completely stuck. We were stumped on this problem. How do we show that a pattern that we have now discovered for the first thousand cases, how could we show that the pattern we discovered actually is the reality, the truth that goes on forever? So in October, Zach and I, wishing to just escape from, escape from Atlanta actually, <laughs> we, we went to Tallulah Falls, we went for a long hike, my wife and our kids were there, and we just wanted to enjoy what well, was really a beautiful day. If I remember correctly, it was 80s, it was brilliant, the sun was out, crystal clear sky, it was an amazing day. And as we do every day, we were talking about our problems. We were talking about the problem of why do the partition numbers have to fold over on themselves. And it was in the course of this walk, and I can't exactly say what the aha moment was, but the absence of, a, of the distractions was clearly important we realized that the process by which these numbers fold over on themselves was very much like what you see in the woods, right? What do you see in a forest? You see a bunch of trees. That's common of all forests. Even among in, in an individual tree, you see a bunch of leaves. But you feel like if you've seen a bunch of trees, you know what a forest looks like. And if you walk a mile on down the trail, while you're still in the woods and you still see a bunch of trees, and sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish between where you are now and where you've come from. And it was as simple as that. We realized, well, maybe we could translate the problem of studying the partition numbers, this, this difficult problem of why do they fold over on themselves, maybe we could turn this into a problem where what if we were just walking among the partition numbers from one partition number to the next and then to the next? Could we turn the idea of a switchback into a, a, rid, a, a concrete mathematical structure which we could prove had to occur over and over again. Because we realized if we could do that, then our fractal structure would have to be true. Instead of having a walk that ends at, at the falls, our walk would just go on forever. What we achieved on this short walk, it was incredible. I mean, it's, it made this year great. It was one of the things that, one of those events that mathematicians hope to have happen in their lives. By the end of the hike, we were again, of course, by the car. Zach and I w walked out to the, stood on these rocks, looked out across this great big valley, which is like the infinite. You can see forever on this beautiful sunny day in, North, in the North Georgia mountains. And um, that was a pretty poetic moment to realize that the little problems that we'd been struggling with that seemed insurmountable 40 minutes ago, that we'd figured out how to solve them making available to us the whole theory we wish to, that we wish to be true. This walk confirmed that the ideas were true 
And you know, for us, looking across, across that valley was very much like saying, well, hey, you guys, we can now see all the partition numbers off to infinity. What is an aha moment? An aha moment is something you can't really define. It just happens to you. But the way I think of it is, it's not something that happens to you instantly. It just happens to be the, the point in time when you realize the fruits of all of your hard work. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.